Today I want to talk about the number one thing that used to drive me crazy as a Unity developer. It's a problem that used to pop up all of the time and I still see it in other people's projects regularly. In fact, just a couple days ago. So what happens, and let me explain the situation, is that you'd be building a game, everything is working completely fine, your enemies are fighting or doing whatever it is that they do, the game works fine. You add a new script in, don't even add anything to the script, press play and all of a sudden the game is broken. Or maybe you build your game up, everything's working, you commit it to source control, download it on your second system, you press play and it doesn't work. You're getting all of these errors. And there's a very common cause for this. And that cause is script execution order. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'll explain why this pops up, why it feels so random, and how you can avoid these problems in your own projects with some really simple tips. I want to start this with a simple scenario so that it makes sense for everybody. Here I've got a mushroom manager, which is a simple script that will give a position back for our mushrooms and three mushrooms in the scene. If I press play, everything works completely fine and I get no errors. But watch what happens when I stop playing, go duplicate a mushroom and press play again. Now we have an error. Let's take a look at the error and see what happened. Why did this pop up and why do we get an error without changing anything, just duplicating an object? Let's go look at the code first. If you look here, you'll see that the error is on line eight. That's where it took us to. And this is getting the position or the next position from our mushroom manager. If I hit F12 here, you'll see that this just returns back the position, just like the code I showed you a little while ago. So why is this one blowing up, but the other mushrooms aren't? Well, let's take a closer look at the log. If we look through our log here, you'll see that at the beginning of the log, I've got collapse turned off. We have mushroom one calling its randomizer, and then mushroom one calling its mushroom one script. You can see down here exactly what line and what script it's in. Then below that, we have a no reference exception on mushroom one, that's our duplicated mushroom, saying that it has a no reference trying to get the mushroom manager. And then right here on the line below that, we have the line in our mushroom manager's awake that's telling us that the mushroom manager has run its awake and assigned the instance. So what's actually going on here, if we take a closer look, go back to the mushroom script, the instance here of the mushroom manager has not been assigned to the mushroom manager yet because this code hasn't run yet. Now the reason that it worked before, if I go back and delete this mushroom and press play again, is that all of the other mushrooms are calling their awake after the mushroom manager. Let's look. We have the mushroom manager here at the top now and all of the other three mushrooms calling their code in their awake after the mushroom manager has initialized. Now, why does this happen? Well, the main reason is that we don't really have any control over the execution order of these scripts. The mushroom script and the mushroom manager script could run at any time. They could run before each other, after each other, or as you saw there, in between. A mushroom script ran and then a mushroom manager script ran. We have zero control over that by default. If we want, though, we can take some control over it. There are three different techniques that you can use to avoid this problem. So let's start with the simplest one, and that's modifying the script execution order. If you want, in Unity, you can actually very specifically tell the editor which scripts to run first. And this works okay as long as the project scale is small and everybody in your team knows to look for it. To find the script execution order, we can go select one of our scripts, like find the mushroom, go find it down here in our project view, and then select the actual script. I can now choose the execution order button here, and it just opens up my project settings. You can also get to this through the project settings menu. Now I've got script execution order selected here, and on the right I can see all of the scripts that already have something assigned. Text Mesh Pro, you can see, wants to run earlier than other things, and the event system wants to run way before everything else. Toggle groups apparently want to run after all the other things. Let's add in our own custom one. I can hit the plus and choose my mushroom manager because I want that to run early, and then I'll give it a negative value of maybe negative, let's go with a negative 10. I'll choose apply, and then that's going to make my mushroom manager run before all of my default scripts, which is default time, which you can just kind of associate with the value of zero. If it's less than zero to run before the defaults, after zero to run after, or above zero to run after the defaults. Let's close this window out, press play, and our error should be gone. 
Look at that, the error is no longer there, and we don't have a script execution order problem because our mushroom manager is calling before all of our mushrooms. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this part that this is an easy, interesting way to modify a script execution order, but it does become problematic as the project gets bigger. When you get more and more scripts and these scripts start to rely on each other, it's easy to come into situations where script execution order just gets a little confusing or complex. And it's also very common that you're gonna bring in other developers who aren't going to think about that because it's just not something that's commonly used. So let's remove that entry and talk about another option, which is using the start method. We'll open up the mushroom script and I'm gonna change my call from being in awake to start. And start and awake are both built-in Unity methods. You've probably used them quite a bit. Start is the one that's there by default. Awake actually gets called before. Let's take a look and see what happens if we call it like this. If I go back into Unity, close my script execution order window again, and press play. What I expect is that I still have no errors. Perfect, but let's take a look at the logs and see why that happened and what's going on here, because if you look, it's a little bit strange. At the top, we actually have mushroom one calling its randomizer, and that's because the randomizer script hasn't been changed. It still gets called in awake. So you can see that mushroom one's awake is still getting called early. Then the mushroom manager is called. It's awake that gets that instance and caches it for us. And then the mushrooms randomizer again, and another mushroom randomizer, and another mushroom randomizer. And then we get into our start methods right here. The start of mushroom one gets called, the start of mushroom two, and the start of mushroom three and four, or they're not really numbered, but that's the order that they're in. You can see here we've got our awakes and then starts. Now let's look at this lifecycle thing in a little bit more detail. I've set up a dragon here that has an awake and on enable and a start and a couple other dragons. You can see in the log that our dragon manager calls first using its awake, which is just like the mushroom manager, but for dragons. We have a dragon awake method that gets called, the dragon on enable, and the dragon start. Now I wanted to show this because it's important to note that First, on enable gets called before start. This is something that people miss very often. But also, on enable gets called, of course, when we re enable the object. And look what happens when we enable a brand new object. I'm going to clear our log real quick, enable a brand new dragon, and we get our awake, on enable, and start again. So all of these are going to be called in the same order. But again, on enable can be called multiple times, and they're always called before start. And it's also important to note something. Let's stop playing and take a look at probably the most confusing and weird part about it. Let's press play again. And look at the way that these are called. Awake and on enable is called for one dragon, then awake and on enable is called for the next dragon, then awake and on enable is called for the next dragon, and awake and on enable is called for the last dragon. Then, and only then, after all of the awakes and on enables, which you can see are called together, after they're all called, then the start methods are called. So then we get all of our starts. So remember that awake comes first, and generally what we want to do in awake is cache things that are local and try not to use external objects. Try not to use things like the singletons that you saw earlier or other references to objects that we don't necessarily know are going to be initialized. If it's something that's initialized in the inspector with a serialized field or it's an object that you're just getting a, a cache object that you're caching on this thing, then awake is a great place for it. Otherwise, I generally recommend you move the initialization and logic type stuff over to the start method. I did, however, mention that there's one third way to do all of this, and that is by combining all of your logic and your setup into single management scripts that do some bootstrapping or some setup, where they'll take all of your objects in, in their awake or in their usually in their start method, will go through and initialize them one at a time, and then in that case, you'll generally not have an awake or a start method in your individual scripts, or at least not in the ones that are being referenced by this manager object to initialize them. It could be a, a dragon manager that gets all of your dragons and then randomizes their positions and randomizes their colors instead of having the dragons deal with that themselves. Then you don't have to worry about execution order, and it makes things a little bit easier to handle, but that can also 
can become a big mess if you have one giant script that's doing way too many things. So think about all of your options. Let me know what you use and if this problem is actually a problem for you. Again, I've run into it a lot of times. I saw it again just a couple days ago and thought it's be an interesting video, something that probably be helpful for people. If so, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, share and all that stuff. Also, if you want to check out the art I used, it's uh, Infinity PBR stuff. I'll link it down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.